Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. We are coming to you from our fantastic central Washington location. Listen, I want to talk to you about an area of confusion uh, and some debate. And I'm hoping to clear up the confusion. I do not believe I am going to solve the debate, but this has to do with some of the aftermath from House Bill 1240 or what we call Washington's assault weapon ban. Now, there is great disagreement amongst the FFL industry, and for good reason. I do not suggest for any moment that they, any of them are being foolish here. In fact, I think some of them are being probably hyper-protective, and I could completely understand why they're doing it. But it has a lot of you wondering what you can get, what you can't get, how do you get it if you want it. So today, let's at least try to get you our position on... So, what is the deal with AR parts in Washington State now? Okay, so what we're talking about today is the aftermath from House Bill 1240, and the question is, is, hey, can I even get replacement parts for my current semi-automatic rifles? Now, we here at Washington Gun Law believe that the answer is yes. However, and I want to make this clear, there are many FFLs who do not see it that way, and there are some who see it that way but are not willing to assume the risk knowing what a prick our attorney general actually is. Now, I think that all of you need to be respectful of the fact that every private company has the right to run its business the way they do, and if you were running an FFL in this state, how much do you want to push the on? envelope to find out where the attorney general may bite back. And if you don't really know what I'm talking about, talk to the folks down at Federal Way Discount Guns. Now, as we know with House Bill 1240, there was a whole new definition added to RCW 9.41.010. That is the traditional definitional section found in the RCWs as it relates to our firearm code. Now, the newly amended 941.010 subsection 2 lists everything that constitutes an assault weapon. Now, the section that we're going to be focusing on today was found in section 2 of the bill and is now again codified 941.010 subsection 2. It is the section that reads as follows. A conversion kit, part, or combination of parts from which an assault weapon can be assembled or from which a firearm can be converted into an assault weapon if those parts are in the possession or under the control of the same person. And this begins to get into the area of constructive possession, which would be an entirely separate video and much longer. Now, it is very clear when we take a look at this language right here, Conversion kit, part, or combination of parts from which an assault weapon can be assembled. However, when you think about it, there is only one part from which an assault weapon, and as a matter of fact, there is only one part from which any firearm can be assembled, and that is the lower receiver. And absolutely without any question, House Bill 1240 bans the sale of any lower receivers for what would be semi-automatic rifles, AR pistols, or anything in that platform. However, if we are in a position where we are actually going to ban every single part, and that includes muzzle brakes, charging handles, bolt carrier groups, barrel shrouds, and the list goes on and on and on, are you actually suggesting that for all of us that were grandfathered in the possession of our pre-existing firearms that we are no longer allowed to get replacement parts and that when something breaks or wears out, that's the end of that firearm? Because now we're getting into the area of an unconstitutional taking. So it has always been Washington gun law's position that muzzle brakes, charging handles, bolt carrier groups, and many of the other components can be used on many different types of platforms of firearms, not just semi-automatic rifles. And for that reason, the only part from which an assault weapon can be assembled from is a lower receiver. Now, there are many other parts that can be used in the conversion of a firearm, but almost in all instances that would require the existence of a pre-existing semi-automatic rifle, which would be grandfathered in as well, okay? So, the bottom line is this. We believe it's okay to sell parts, just not lower receivers. Now, there are some very, very good, very reputable FFLs out there that have not seen it that way and at the current time are not selling any AR parts. 
Some of them do it because they see the law that way. Some of them do it because they've been incredibly politically active in fighting this insanity for the last few years. And they think they probably have a target on their back. And again, getting back to what a wreck our attorney general can be, that is probably good concern. Now, there are other FFLs out there, however, who have seen the things the same way as Washington gun law. And I'm gonna name a couple that I happen to know personally. And I encourage if anybody else owns an FFL or knows of an FFL who is actually comfortable selling all of the replacement parts, please put that down in the description box below. But two of the ones that I routinely talk about, of course, is Security Gun Club in Woodenville, Washington, and Guardian Arms over in Moses Lake. And I know for a fact that both of them are selling all parts except for lower receivers. And again, I'm sure there are several other FFLs out there. So that is what the great debate is about. Now, have we asked the attorney general for some clarification? Of course we have. Has the attorney general provided any clarification? Of course they haven't. And if you called the attorney general, especially if you were an FFL and said, hey, I just wanna know what this really means. They're gonna say, hey, go talk to a lawyer. Now, let us also remember that if we're gonna get into the rule of statutory construction, okay? Ultimately, if a criminal statute is subject to two reasonable interpretations, the court has to adopt the least restrictive interpretation under what's called the rule of lenity. So there is always that in case you ended up in litigation. But that is essentially what the great debate is about parts. If you are interested in continuing to do some build outs for firearms that pre-existed the ban, Many of you may have a whole cabinet full of lower receivers. Hmm. Um, but if you want to continue to do build outs, yes, there are FFLs in this state that can assist you. Listen, you may have more questions about all the fallout of House Bill 1240 or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights here. You should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.